Good afternoon. My name is Harold Martin, and I'm Chancellor of North Carolina A&T State University, uh, the institution, one of the 20, <laughs> where Mr. McGill was admitted. And his choice uh, for his plans for enrolling this coming fall as a mechanical engineer major with a minor in aerospace engineering. We're absolutely excited. To say the least. One of the first things I want to do, first of all, is congratulate Mr. McGill, not only for your outstanding message today and your confidence in standing before this large audience and sharing a bit about yourself, but a change in your thinking about your future and making an absolute commitment to begin to reframe your commitment to your future and commitment to your motto, which essentially says failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. And so we congratulate you today for your commitment to recognizing that you would build new friends, but more importantly, your commitment to your future was far more important. So congratulations to you. Let me assure you, uh, Mrs. McGee, Ms. McGill is here with us today. I'd like for her to stand and be recognized at this moment as well. So I want to assure Ms. McGill that we have, through my personal commitment, a passion for tough love. <laughs> we recognize that Isaac has suggested that he wants to be an aerospace engineer. I'm an electrical engineer. And I realize the expectations. More importantly, I realize the great opportunities. Getting to where Isaac needs to be from where he is today will require additional hard work, additional dedication, additional commitment. I know he has it in him. We will continue to draw that from him. And with your support, our support, and our expectations high, we will push him across that line where he seeks. So congratulations to you. We look forward to engaging you this August. And again, thank you very much. I'm also a member of the North Carolina New Schools Project Board. One of the reasons that I have become engaged in this important work is reflected in Isaac's comments. Not all of our children excel in our traditional high school settings. And we need to have and create opportunities for them in different venues to be challenged, to be engaged, to be pushed, to be allowed to grow. Clearly, Howard has provided a great opportunity for Isaac. In much of my interaction with our business and community leaders in the greensboro Guilford County community, and quite frankly, throughout my career, we have often taken the time to listen to our business and community leaders. How many of you have paid much attention to, in recent months, the ExxonMobil commercials about where we stand globally in our competition in math and science. By show of hands. Thank you. That to me is telling. It really is. And it also suggests to us that in a nation among the richest in the world, the most powerful nation in the world, clearly must reaffirm its serious commitment to preparing its citizens for the future. It indeed is a matter of national defense. It really is. It indeed is a matter of national defense. Our business and community leaders have said to me continuously over the last 36 months, that's how long I've been chancellor at North Carolina ENT, we need North Carolina ENT 
and our public universities, our colleagues at the University of North Carolina Greensboro, great colleagues, to be much more an integral part of what we seek to do in enhancing the economic competitiveness of our region. There are a whole array of strategies that have emerged. Among them, though, are those strategies related to improving the quality and competitiveness of K-12 and education in general. K-12, our relationships with our community colleges, and our collaboration among our public and private institutions throughout our region, throughout the state. We have taken them very seriously. We really have. We have a middle college on our campus focused strategically on all males in the Gift County school system who have not found the traditional high school setting to meet their needs. About 120 of these young men are on our campus today in our middle college. Eric Hines, our principal, is here. Eric, if you could stand for one 30-second glimpse of fame. This middle college, of which we are making an absolute commitment to with our school system superintendent, with whom we work very closely, 100% graduation rate, 100% college admittance. These are African-American, Hispanic, male high school graduates. 100% graduation rates, 100% college going from this graduating class. Nowhere else in America can you say that is occurring. Our community leaders have suggested to us that we need to do more with math and science. We have a great math and science STEM focus in the Gift County School System. We really do. Great partners with our colleagues at UNCG and with the Gift County School System. We have made a commitment with our business and community leaders to start a new high school on our campus. STEM Early College that will begin this fall with 50 high school ninth graders. We want to assure that those outstanding students in a similar way as our middle college students, in a similar way as Mr. McGill, will gain the level of attention, guidance, high expectations, and level of performance and preparation that they deserve as a part of this STEM high school. That's, those are some of the reasons I think it's important to be involved in North Carolina New Schools Project Board. There is so much more we can do per the ExxonMobil advertisement. And that's why we're pleased you're here as well. So thank you for all you do to help make a difference in our schools in our state. And we certainly want to thank our corporate partners as well. Now my task at hand. My responsibility is to introduce our keynote speaker. This is an exceptional individual. He is a dear colleague and friend and is a man who has led the University of Maryland, Baltimore County and has transformed this institution in remarkable ways, in absolutely remarkable ways, in ways that have challenged many of us in higher education to think differently about what we do in our own leadership roles and leading our own institutions. Again, Dr. Freeman Rabowski has served as president of the University of Maryland, Baltimore County since 1992. His background, research, publications focus on science and math education with special emphasis on minority participation and performance. Very recently, he chaired the National Academies Committee that produced a recent report expanding underrepresented minority participation, America's science and technology talent at the crossroads. A very important report that I would advise for your reading, an incredibly important set of recommendations for how we must seek to engage very differently if we're going to meet some of the human resource needs to meet our STEM demands. 
In 2008, he was named one of America's best leaders by U.S. News and World Report, which in 2009, 2010, and 2011 ranked University of Maryland, Baltimore County the number one up-and-coming university in the nation. In 2011, U.S. News and World Report ranked UMBC fourth nationally for best undergraduate teaching, tied with Yale. Time Magazine named him one of America's 10 best college presidents in 2009 and one of the 100 most influential people in the world in 2012. Maybe you didn't hear me say that. <laughs> one of America's 100 most influential people in the world in 2012. In 2011, he received both the TIAA CREF Theodore M. Hesburgh Award for Leadership Excellence and the Carnegie Corporation of New York's Academic Leadership Award, recognized by many as the nation's highest award among higher education leaders. Also in 2011, he was named one of seven top American leaders by the Washington Post and the Harvard Kennedy School's Center for Public Education. And he was most recently featured on CBS's 60 Minutes. And I think we have a clip. And if that clip is ready, I suggest we roll it. 